Hi. Um, oh, hang on. G'day. Hey, um, today we're going to be making a fan box for a small spray booth. Stranger mask? Yes. In a nutshell, when I don't want to use this to paint something big, psst, 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 no air, I have to make the noise myself. Psst, psst. I'd like to be able to use this. Psst, psst. Problem is, lots of dust and I don't have a spray brush. So, I have three of these big old computer fans. Gonna stick them in the back of a makeshift box with a fan bracket and it's going to have um, some edges around it so then I'll be able to suck the dust out while I'm spraying with the psst, psst. of course this one psh, psh, I'll still have to use outside because um, it makes a lot of mess ok so we're going to start the process of designing our fan box now um, I think it's 650mm wide um, take by about 170 tall, so just draw a 650mm long wire and then put a line parallel to 170 out. Um, we'll join up the box, just like so. So, I'm using LibreCAD here, um, which is my 2D CAD program of choice. Uh, I normally use it under Linux, it's a platform independent open source piece of software. And uh, yeah, I just find that it's, it's good for everything I want to do. Um, using it on Windows here at the moment, Windows XP. Uh, because the screen recording software I use is based on Windows. So I've just drawn some nice parallel lines there. Um, that lets me find the centre. Shove my 120mm hole in the middle. Um, and I want to put another two either side of that. So. I think we'll space them out mm, about one for either side and you can see that we're pretty quickly going to build up the type of design we want here and as it happens I've got one I created earlier so we'll just have a look at the one we created earlier um, because that will be a lot quicker um, then redrawing it completely. So basically I started out with my three fans, um, standard space mounting holes, which are five mil holes, and then to use five mil screws and created the sides here for it, which you can see. And they're gonna um, join in key in to the the panel. And that's about it. Pretty simple piece of uh, design work. Took me about 20 minutes in LibreCAD to knock that up. And then we take it into our CAM software. Okay, so here we are in VCarve Pro from Vectric. Um, I find this is a great piece of software for things I want to do. Um, there's lots and lots of different options out there in this market. So I'm going to create a single panel job, 600mm by a metre. It's 9.1mm thick. Um, the MDF I'm using is actually 9mm, um, but I measured it with a vernier and it's actually 9.1 and I want to cut almost exactly through the um, the material so I don't have too much work to do cleaning it up. Um, once I've created a new blank job I can just import a vector, point it at the file I created in the CAD program and you can see here it's bored on those vectors and uh, they will sort of nicely fit down the, fitted it down the bottom there. Um, turn them around so they'll actually fit on the, the wood and just chain them together or join the vectors together. So what that does is creates solid objects out of each of the vectors, links them all together into one chunk. I'll just shift these out to the side here a bit. Um, just give it a bit more space to breathe as it were. So when you're um, working with this sort of thing you want to think a wee bit about how things are going to be cut, the order they're going to be cut in. Um, so what you want to do is you want to do holes and things first in your material and then you want to follow up with doing the outlines. Um, the idea being that you don't want to have 
a hole being cut out of the centre of a piece of material which is sitting by itself because um, the machine might shove it around so that looks like an efficient use of the material now what we'll do is we'll create a new toolpath so we're going to drill out the holes first so we'll select all the um, the holes That was a pretty inefficient way of doing that. Let's select all of the holes. So these are the 5mm holes. We'll create a new drilling toolpath. So we want them to be 9.1mm deep. And we want a 5mm tool. So we don't actually have a 5mm tool there. Um, we'll quickly give it a 5mm tool. Make its maximum depth a bit deeper than we'll ever need. Um, and... Uh, I'm going to feed that at about 2 metres a minute, just give or take. Taking a guess there. So there we go. I'll calculate. So it's generated that toolpath, and then I want to cut out these holes here. So just go around and create a profile path. Inside, we'll use that same 5mm tool, which is stuck under Imperial tools. How silly is that? So it's been was 5mm an Imperial tool. Okay, calculate. And you can see in your 3D view, it's 3D, um, what's going to happen. Interestingly enough, I gave it the wrong depth, so it didn't uh, cut right through. And that's going to cut those right through now. And then I just want to select the outlines. Generate another profile cut, this time we're going outside, same depth. Calculate that. Yeah. And there's our parts box. And uh, in reality what I actually did is I created this earlier. And I put some pretty text on it, so... Um, that was just me being a little silly. That's right. Looked like that. But once you've done the parts in VCAF here. You can just save out the toolpath, so we'll save it to So I'm going to save all of the visible toolpaths, give it a name, call it Frank. That'll save that file out. We then copy the file to a memory stick, stick it in the controller, and we're ready to cut. So uh, I'll see you out in the shed. So I need to tidy up the table in the machine before I start cutting. But a good interesting tip. Cool flute. Doesn't make a very interesting sound. But it's really good for blocking off the bits of the vacuum table you're not, you're not using to increase the amount of available vacuum. And it's a lot softer than the Perspex I was using. Um, so if I clip this with a small tool, um, going at 5 metres a minute, I won't break it. Not a bad idea. And it was really cheap. And my next tip for the day as well, um, I was having a lot of trouble cleaning up the table when I'd cut a big um, job out of NDF. Um, so, if I'd done this, hey look, I'm framed. Um, I'd find that the dust left on the table would actually block up my small vacuum cleaner. So what I did, is I got some junctions and these cool slidey gates. And I've now got a better vacuum cleaner. So this is hooked up to the dust collector and I can actually suck up stuff with it, it's great. Righty ho, the table's all nice and clean after the last job I did. Already put my 5mm tool in and um, we're going to cut the piece out of... Nice shiny piece of 5mm MDF. I think there's a bird on the roof.
cut to that. So we just got to um, suck out the dust and uh, clean it up and then staple it together. Okay, ho so um, we now have a kit of parts, um, all I've got to do is give them a quick sand along the edges, just to uh, make them look purdy, and then we'll, we'll drop them, we'll uh, go and staple them together. First I'll get this out of the way. Okay, now when I'm sticking this together, I'm going to glue it and staple it. If you're working with MDF a lot, and you haven't got a kadonk, you need to get one. Don't, don't point that at the camera, it's not safe. Okay, so basically we're using standard PVA and just uh, running a wee bit into each bit of the joint, very roughly. This is not uh, high art furniture at the end of the day. And then banging some staples in. And lastly, as is appropriate, the end. So there you have it, fan, bo fan box version one. Um, so all I've got to do now is mount the fans. Um, the plan there is to tap the uh, holes in the corners for an M5 screw, run the screws through. Right here we've got our three fans sitting there. Um, they're not um, quiet fans, not 120mm quiet fans, they're aluminium cased um, air shifters. So a lot of it's 120mm fans are designed for quiet PCs. Um, these ones are designed for shifting air. I've got some uh, M5 machine screws that I'm going to use for the job. Uh, because they're quite long, I'm actually going to drill out the back hole in each of the fans and tap the front one. Um, that's because it's quicker to drill and tap a hole than it is to uh, cut these down and then clean up the thread. Okay, now we've uh, drilled out that side of the fans, and all we need to do is thread these sides, other side. So we're going to do that the quick way. Now you really want to make sure you've got a sharp tap if you're um, tapping holes with a battery drill, otherwise you're going to get tap snappage. You also want to make sure that you're in slow mode. Um, going in too fast would probably break the tap as well. Right, so now what we've got to do is um, tin up the connectors on here, solder them up together with some wiring in parallel, um, so all three fans run in parallel, and uh, make that nice and safe, and then screw things together.
suppose at this stage I should say that um, if you've got three thumbs and you don't know anything about electricity you shouldn't try this at home or you should get an adult to help you with the uh, sharp scissors okay now just as a bit of added protection I'm going to put heat shrink on the uh, exposed mains and that should stop me being able to get my tongue across the wiring uh, once it's installed okay so we've got our three fans sitting there ready to go now we're going to mount them up we're going to be going around this way so we're using these long machine screws and I'll just thread a couple of them to check that it's all going to be together okay last screw going in We have bank fans. Something else I did well uh, when the camera was off was added these blocks to the back of it here, um, and that's to space it off the window frame because it's going to sit with a louvered window behind it to blow the dust outside, or the, the spray, overspray outside, and um, I need a bit of a gap to clear the louver. Okay, that's all screwed up. I mean, um, screwed in. I'm going to provide an earth to each fan uh, via the screw conveniently. So those screws will be are screwed down quite tight into the aluminium, and I can just put a lug on there, uh, which will give me a reliable earth. And um, that's just in case, of course, because um, this is going to be up inside a box um, where I'm spraying, and it's unlikely to get contact with them. But if you do, um, the earth will let the RCD on the switchboard to turn off the mains and avoid a shocking experience. Okay, so I'm running the wiring for each of the three fans back to a connector block in the end here. And uh, it is a tad large, I'll admit that, but that's because it's the only one I had lying around. There we go, so I just need to mount this up here. Uh, put another couple of cable ties around it. And I'll uh, run the lead in with some strain relief. Okay, I've run my uh, cord in. It's just a old computer lead. I've ch 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 chopped the end off. And um, to mount it, I'm going to use my trusty Bostic glue gun. It really is a Bostic glue gun too. Um, so a great big dollop on there. I'll shove that in the corner. Um, hot glue is actually really cool on MDF, it works quite well. Um, and I'm actually going to hot glue in the power cord as well. So a couple of beads of hot glue down the side there will hold that better than I need really. Gratuitous hot glue, nothing like a bit of gratuitous hot glue. Okay, so now for the moment of truth. I'll uh, plug it in and see if we get wind. We have wind and quite a bit of it. Okay, so the. Oh. That was quite noisy. So that's my fan box. Um, the plan is that it's going to sit at the back of a makeshift spray booth against the window uh, over the other side of the garage there. And that'll allow me to use the airbrush inside in the evenings uh, for painting small objects uh, like, uh, or priming small objects like doll's house furniture, painting, things like that. Um, and also spraying oil. Um, so uh, Dutch oil for ornamental stuff. Yeah, anyway, there you have it, a fan box.